What is the purpose of a DNS server in a network environment? Choose two. Is it A, transferring files between devices? Is it B, converting domain names to IP addresses? Is it C, assigning IP addresses to devices? Or is it D, securing network traffic? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are B and C, converting domain names to IP addresses and assigning IP addresses to devices. DNS servers translate human readable domain names into IP addresses and they also assign IP addresses to devices in the network. Think of DNS servers like a phone book that translates names to phone numbers and assigns numbers to new users. And for the incorrect answers, transferring files between devices. DNS server handle name resolution, not file transfers. And securing network traffic, DNS servers focus on name resolution, not security. And for the next question for our exam, question number two. And the question states, what could be a reason for poor print quality in a laser printer? Choose two. Is it A, using low quality paper? Is it B, low toner levels? Is it C, incorrect printer drivers? Or is it D, high humidity levels? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are A and B, using low quality paper and low toner levels. Low quality paper affects print output and low toner levels result in faded prints. Imagine using low quality paper like using a blurry canvas for a painting. And for the incorrect answers, incorrect printer drivers. Incorrect drivers can lead to issues but they don't directly affect print quality and high humidity levels don't directly impact print quality. And for the next question for exam, question number three. And the question states, what is the purpose of a mobile device's e-mail number? Choose one. Is it A, identifying the device's manufacturer? Is it B, identifying the device's model? Is it C, identifying the device's operating system? Or is it D, identifying the device's unique identifier? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is D, identifying the device's unique identifier. EMA or International Mobile Equipment Identity is a unique number used to identify mobile devices. Think of EMA as a fingerprint that distinguishes one device from another. And for the incorrect answers, the EMA doesn't indicate a manufacturer, the EMA doesn't indicate a model, and the EMA doesn't relate to the operating system. And for the next question for exam, question number four. And the question states, which hardware component is responsible for temporarily storing data that the CPU is currently processing? Choose one. Is it A, hard drive? Is it B, RAM? Is it C, CPU? Or is it D, GPU? And I have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, RAM. RAM or random access memory is used to temporarily store data for quick access by the CPU. Imagine RAM as a desk space where the CPU works on tasks. And now for the incorrect answers. The hard drive stores data but not for immediate CPU access. The CPU processes data but doesn't store it for processing. And the GPU focuses on graphics processing, not data storage for the CPU. And for the next question for exam, question number five. And the question states, which type of software provides an interface for users to interact with the computer's hardware and software? Choose one. Is it A, application software? Is it B, system software? Is it C, security software? Or is it D, antivirus software? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, system software. System software includes the operating system and utility software that manage hardware and provide user interfaces. Think of system software like a translator between users and the computer. And now for the incorrect answers. Applications perform specific tasks but don't manage hardware and software interfaces. Security software focuses on protecting the system from threats. And antivirus software detects and removes malware unrelated to user interfaces. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, what is the main purpose of a hypervisor in virtualization? Choose two. Is it A, running applications on the host OS? Is it B, creating virtual networks? Is it C, managing virtual machines? Or is it D, monitoring hardware temperature? And now have five seconds. And the correct answers are B and C, creating virtual networks and managing virtual machines. Hypervisors create and manage virtual environments, including networks and virtual machines. Think of a hypervisor as a conductor managing a virtual or orchestra. 
and for the incorrect answers, hypervisor focus on virtualization, not running applications, and hypervisors don't monitor hardware directly. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, what can you do to troubleshoot a computer that doesn't display anything on the monitor during startup? Choose two. Is it A, to check if the monitor is connected properly? Is it B, to reinstall the operating system? Is it C, to replace the CPU? Or is it D, to reseat the RAM modules? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are A and D, to check if the monitor is connected properly and to reseat the RAM modules. Checking the monitor's connection and reseating RAM can resolve display issues. Think of reseating RAM modules like adjusting the position of a jigsaw puzzle piece. And for the incorrect answers, operating system reinstallation won't fix display issues, and CPU issues typically don't cause display problems. And for the next question of our exam, question number 8. And the question states, which type of network topology connects all devices in a linear sequence? Choose one. Is it A, star topology? Is it B, mesh topology? Is it C, bus topology? Or is it D, ring topology? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is C, bus topology. In a bus topology, devices are connected in a linear sequence through a central cable. Imagine bus topology like a single highway connecting all towns. And now for the incorrect answers, star topology connects devices to a central hub, not linearly. Mesh connects in devices in a mesh-like pattern, not linearly, and ring topology forms a closed loop, not linear. And for the next question of our exam, question number 9. And the question states, which security practice involves limiting users' access to only the resources necessary for their job? Choose one. Is it A, password complexity? Is it B, least privilege? Is it C, network segmentation? Or is it D, firewall configuration? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is B, least privilege. Least privilege grants users the minimum permissions needed to perform their tasks. Think of least privilege like giving someone a key to their office but not all the rooms. And now for the incorrect answers, password complexity ensures strong passwords but isn't about access levels. Network segmentation divides networks for security but isn't about users' access. And firewall configuration protects against threats but isn't about users' permissions. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. And the question states, what operational procedure ensures critical systems and data are accessible in case of a disaster? Choose one. Is it A, routine systems updates? Is it B, incident response? Is it C, business continuity planning? Or is it D, hardware disposal? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is C, business continuity planning. Business continuity planning ensures critical operations continue during disasters. Think of business continuity planning as a backup strategy for emergencies. And for the incorrect answers, updates improve security but don't directly address disaster recovery. Incident response deals with threats but isn't about disaster recovery. And hardware disposal is about safely removing old equipment. Don't forget to read all the questions carefully. Don't rush and make sure you fully understand what is presented in the exam. Take your time to memorize all the acronyms and what they represent. Also, make sure that you go through all the exam objectives from the CompTIA official website so you know what subjects to expect on your exam day. For a more comprehensive list of exams, you can check my Udemy Instructor channel where I have posted a number of exams for the CompTIA A Plus test. The test consists of 90 questions each and they are very similar to the official CompTIA exam. The link to my Udemy channel is presented down in the channel's description. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. Peace!